What is up, YouTube family? It's Sam coming at you again with Vertical Expressions, and today we are doing another episode of Bible Breakdown Bible Studies. Today we are breaking down Acts 17. Now, I wanted to call this Bible study if you stand for anything, you fall for everything, or if you stand for nothing, you fall for everything. But it was too long and too confusing as you can see, so instead I decided to call this Bible study Strong Foundation. I think Acts 17 has a lot of information that we can use, that we can apply in building a strong, faithful foundation that we can fall back on when things get rough and continue to walk right before God. So I hope you guys are ready, grab your Bibles, we're going to jump into this, let's go. So in verses 1 through 9 we see that Paul and company arrived to Thessalonica, Thessalo. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you know how to say it, again, comment section is for you. You know, teach me, teach me, like help, help a brother out, help a brother out. We see that through verses one through nine, Paul and company arrive to this location that starts with a T and they begin to share the gospel. Now, at first they're fruitful, but again, as is the trend so far, haters pop out of nowhere. They just know exactly when to pop out. Haters start popping out. The Jews start complaining. They start causing trouble. They be, they, they, they start up plans to want to kill uh, Paul and company. And and so Paul and company, those with him, they decide to hide. The Jews can't find him, so instead they look for Jason. And they bring him out to the center of the town. And they uh, want to lock him up. Oh, I think they do lock him up. So they take Jason and they make him post bond, as the scripture says, and they make him pay before they let him go. They don't actually lock him up, although it's, you know, they take him, they they don't lock him up. So right off the bat, we, we get one, one quick lesson here, and that lesson is that there is a price to pay for what you believe. And we see that Jason, due to association to the cause, to Paul and company, uh, to, to the gospel, uh, he does get dragged out of his home. They pull him out and they, they, he's involved. You know, they treat him like he's involved. And that's something that as Christians, sometimes we overlook. We think that, you know, we're Christians now when we're walking in this world and nothing, nothing like we're not going to catch any flag for that. But a lot of times we do. See, when we start bearing the name of Jesus with our lifestyle, it, we're just associated with Christ and the haters are gonna come up and whether or not we we're we're attached to something You're probably gonna get judged for it There are a lot of Christians who have made very poor poor decisions and they have shamed the church with their actions And so that same projects projection is given to you know new believers or people who have nothing to do with that We're seen through the same scope because of association and that's just the price you pay for the cause now, what we should do in these situations is, is shine our light, is, is do what's right and, and show the world the other scope where it's like, yeah, you know, we're not all perfect, but we're doing our best. And I'm going to do my best to show you uh, th this life, this to show you this God that I believe in. Belief and, and passion for your cause is essential. You know, being all in for what you believe in, you, you need to go ahead and do that. Now, now it's a double-edged sword because you can go a hundred for the right thing and praise God for that. But you can also go a hundred for the wrong thing. And that's where you got to begin to practice discernment. And we're going to get into that later. I'm not going to touch on that now because I want to get to the rest of the chapter. But it's going to be good, so stick around. Let's get to it. So through verses 10 to 15, we see that Paul and company, they move on to the next town. And they begin to preach the gospel. They begin to share the gospel. And they're, they're, they're fruitful. Like, they're, they're gaining ground. And then all of a sudden, those same haters from the previous town, they show up there. Like, for real. They're, they're passionate. Let's not overlook how passionate these Jews are. Like, they're traveling. They're actively traveling to hunt down Paul and company and keep them from sharing the gospel. Meanwhile, Paul and company, they're so passionate that they're just going to continue to preach the gospel. You know, they're, this is both passions. But one is fighting for this and one is fighting for that. So I really want you guys to check your passion. Check check where your focus is because you can easily be fighting for the wrong team. Now I want to slow down and I want to read verses 16 to 21. They go like this. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, 
as well in the marketplace day by day with those uh, who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with them. Some of them asked, what is this blabber trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of Arap Ar Arapagus, man. These words are really making a brother look bad, like, oh my goodness. Where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athen Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Whoa, now that sounds, that sounds good. That sounds, but, but oh my goodness. You guys finish watching the video because I'm about to drop some knowledge. So right off the bat, we can see that the Athens or those who resided in Athens, they were, we didn't run into the same situations that we did in the previous two cities. You see, they, they, were not heavily believing in one thing you know the Jews in the other cities they attacked Paul and company because what they were preaching was against their customs you know they were passionate for what they believed in but here we see that these individuals are very open they're like you know whatever comes our way we're gonna hear you while wow, all we do is listen to new ideas entertain new things now I want you guys to consider that I want you guys to pay attention to that because it may not be as cool or as good as it seems. So we know that the city was full of idols and we know that they spent their time entertaining whatever new ideas came their way. They entertained everything and in turn their city, their dwelling place, it, it represented that. For every new idea that came the way they adopted it. So what did they do? We have something flies into their head, they build the idol. The new teaching comes this way, they build the idol. They accept everything and they start giving it life but they start giving it purpose in their lives now i want to ask you how many thoughts how many things have flown into your head that you've entertained and you've made that into an idol in your mind how open have you been to certain things that maybe you shouldn't have and you've given that the opportunity to to sow roots into your life that you build up those idols in your head i want to ask you how many how, how much gossip have you listened to you know, how many, how many hours have you spent in front of the TV watching the wrong thing? How many conversations have you overheard? How much time have you spent on Instagram watching this, this, or that? How many false principles have you accepted in your life only because you spent your time watching these things that, that it sort of brainwashed you into thinking that that's normal? We have so much that's pushed you up through ads, you know, so... To, so much inappropriate images, so much inappropriate teachings or behaviors that we see, we see so much of it, we start thinking, hey, maybe this is okay, maybe this is normal. And before you know it, your head is full of idols that you're serving, that, that are getting in the way of your principles in Christ. Now, I'm not saying do not use these resources because let me tell you, Instagram, Facebook, TV, YouTube, all of it can be very educational. What you choose to give your time to, that's where the problem lies. If you know you're watching this drama, you're watching this, this chaos, you're watching reality TV, you're watching these scripts that are meant to create turmoil in your head, you know, people take time to write these scripts to create these emotions and overflow of emotions to engage you and wrap you into that story so you continue to watch the next episode and the next episode and the next episode. But before you know it, you spend so many hours just engulfed in that. You head over to real life and you think it's okay to start behaving like that. Or better yet, you see so many inappropriate inappropriate images. You, 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 your mind gets so full of it. You go into real life, you get into a relationship. Or you, you see a man, you see a female, whatever. And then you start seeing them through that same scope. And before you know it, you're thinking, hey, that's okay, that's normal, that's fine. You, you watch poisonous relationships. You watch poisonous encounters, po poisonous friendships, people betraying each other and all that. You watch so much of it, you get filled with it. You go into real life and then you start acting that same thing out, right? You start betraying someone. You start thinking that you can step over someone to get ahead. You start thinking that winning is everything. You start embracing 
these cultural things that you were never meant to embrace, but you've set up your idols. You set up these idols in your head only because you've been giving yourself to it so much. You've, you've opened yourself too much to these ideas where they've become idols in your mind and now they're casting a shadow over the principles that you are building with Christ. Let me tell you, life is tough. As a Christian individual, I will tell you this, life is tough, it's not that easy. We have a calling to represent Christ every, every moment of the day and God, through his grace and his mercy, he gives us the strength to continue to move forward. But the last thing we need is to get into a difficult moment where our emotions are out of whack and instead of responding how Jesus would, we begin to respond the way that person in that TV show did, the way that person that we saw on IG did. The, we, we begin to imitate all the wrong things. Now, we can't be both. We can't imitate Christ and then imitate the world at the same time. You know what I mean? You can't be open to Christ and what Christ wants to do with you and, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but then also imitate and represent everything that you've been watching and feeding your soul your mind you can't do that it, you can't serve all these gods and we see that with those people who dwell in athens like they were too open they let themselves build up idols for everything and and in reality they stood for nothing they had no solid foundation so i want to ask you when did compromising our faith become okay when did when did missing out on certain things become a reason to let go of our foundations in Christ. Now I know it's super easy because the world is the world and we live in this world, you know. Ads are, are pushing everything on us. They're pushing relationships on us. Instagram is pushing the world on us. Instagram is an ad machine. Like it's meant to push these ideas on you. And it's so easy to, to watch these things and then feel like you're missing out on so much. But I wanna tell you, you're really not. You're, you're really and truly not. You have everything you need and more in Jesus Christ and God is faithful to provide, you know, but the more you feed your soul with all these new ideas and entertaining all these things, the harder it's gonna be for you to set your focus and for you to build a solid foundation on principles that are sound, on principles that are gonna help you, on principles that are gonna push you forward and help you to be a better person, on principles that are gonna help you achieve your your goals and your purpose here on this earth. So my prayer for today is that God, you, you may help us to set up filter in our lives, set up filters for what we listen to, for what we watch, for what we get our give our, our time to. Help us to be more intentional in giving you our time, Father God, and giving you our attention and in spending time with you so that we may begin to entertain your ideas and make idols and make 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 sacrifices to you God instead of sacrificing our, our lifestyle to to these idols that are not going to help us that are not gonna get us any closer to heaven not get us any closer to being better people not getting any closer to making this world a better place I hope you guys enjoyed truly most of all, I hope you guys were edified. I hope that this word finds you wherever you are. I hope that you find the courage. I pray that you find the courage, you know, to make that lifestyle change, to give less time to social media, to give less time to TV, to give less time to drama. I hope that you begin to filter what you listen to and instead start filling your life with positivity, with, with, with the word of God, with videos just like this. And in case you guys need a resource for more Bible studies, feel free to subscribe. This is a shameless plug. Like this button, like, like, bless that like button so that I can continue to make these videos. Subscribe and continue to be fed the word of God. You know, pray for me. Pray for me so I can continue to keep it real with y'all. That I can continue to grow. This has been great. I hope to see you guys again on the next episode of Bible Breakdown. I'll see you.